This is The Fitting Lab, an EVE Online ship fitting video series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a shining example of Amar ingenuity. The tough yet powerful frigate from the Amar Empire and the golden child of Tech 1 damage projection. It's the Tormentor. And welcome back to The Fitting Lab, where today we are taking a look at fits once again for one of my favourite ships in the game, and that is of course the Tormentor here. Uh, now today, I'm also very happy to say that I'm being joined by a very special guest, none other than professional blogger and internet spaceship pilot sensation, Stay Frosty pilot, pilot Mathia Selenus. Uh, Mathia, thanks heaps for coming on. Thanks for having me, Rico. I'm actually very happy to talk about the Tormentor. It's one of my favorite Tech 1 frigates as well, and it's the ship I've started with. So somebody gave me a Tormentor fit, and that's the first ship I've lost in PvP, and I've lost quite, quite, quite a bunch of them, and eventually became a bit better. So yeah, really happy to give some pointers about it. I think it's a great ship to start in PvP. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, me and Mathia have been playing together, actually in Signal Cartel, uh, probably pretty fitting that the ad is uh, playing in the station here. Uh, actually, we, we, yeah, we started together in Signal Cartel in like 2015. So we've been playing together on and off now for about two and a bit years, I guess, and um, Mathia is basically, Mathia is basically my go-to person for any questions EVE related and particularly solo PvP related. Uh, if I've got a question about solo PvP or about EVE in general, Mathia is pretty much my first port of call. Uh, so very happy once again to be having Mathia on here today. Uh, and we are taking a look at, of course, the Tormentor. Uh, now before I do start here, all of the fits that we will be talking about here today will be linked in the description of the video, uh, as well as a link to Mathia's New Eden blog. Uh, so if you want to check that out, that will be down there. Uh, but let's take a look at the info for the Tormentor here, and we'll just go to the traits here. Now you can see pretty standard in terms of traits for like a Tech 1 frigate. We have 10% reduction to small energy turret activation cost. Uh, so we're going to get a little bit more cap life out of our, uh, our energy turrets there. That being said, lasers um, lasers still use quite a bit of cap. Uh, and we also get a 5% bonus to small energy turret damage. Um, and with the Tormentor, uh, particularly if you're fitting beams, you can really get some pretty crazy damage and also really great projection with the Tormentor um, so that it can do things, it can do things that not a lot of, or pretty much no other Tech 1 Frigate can do in terms of projection uh, of high amounts of DPS. Uh, if we take a look at the slot layout here, you can see we have three high slots for the Tormentor. All of these are going to be taken up for guns. We have three turret hard points here as well. Uh, in the mid slots, we have three available slots there. Um, so not a lot of room for utility here but at least enough for you to fit a prop mod, a scram, and a web. Uh, and then in the low slots, we do have four low slots, so a fairly decent amount of low slots there, which does give you um, a few different options for speed, damage, uh, and damage resistance. Uh, Mathia, is there anything that you want to just add generally about the Tormentor? I think you've summed it up pretty nicely and I agree that the Tormentor is really an exceptional thing. There is one thing it can do better than any other Tech 1 Frigate in the game and that is having damage at the age of Scrum. So it's like the perfect Scrum Kiter. Mm. It has uh, about above 200 DPS uh, that it can project with the beam guns. Uh, which is enormous, like if you compare to others. The other scram, usual scram characters are about 150, 170 DPS. So that's really a huge advantage. Uh, and that probably will dictate how you're going to fit it. If you want, like really to use the bonuses of the ship, 
you're gonna fit it with beams and you're gonna try to stay at eight kilometers and train DPS. Yeah, without a doubt it's one of it's one of the stronger tech one frigates for sure. Um, we do have five different fits that we're gonna take a look at here today. Now this that you see here is the standard beam fit. So this is pretty much I guess the meta beam fit at this point. Um, and yeah, like we were saying, pretty insane DPS at range with this. So if you enjoy scram kiting, if you enjoy uh, fighting, you know, that sort of style, trying to keep range on brawly things uh, and applying a hell of a lot of damage, then the Tormentor is really going to be a ship that you will enjoy. Uh, so with multi-frequency loaded here and our guns hot, we're doing 224 DPS. I believe that's with, yeah, that's with Hobgoblin 2s here. Um, and yeah, we have, how much tank in total do we have with the Tormi, with the standard Tormi? Oh, it's, it's about 6.57 uh, yep. thousand EHP. So it's the average, like it's the average high uh, tech one uh, frigate tank. It's a bit less than say, a Tristan, uh, definitely less than Incursus or Breacher that are bonus for tank. It's a, it's a very reasonable tank and compared to the damage uh, you project it's a very nice ratio yeah if you can of course like apply all your damage and if you repair in time you have to be careful your buffer is fairly low uh, you only have like just a little over 1k uh, buffer on your armor your hull is as well it's not a galenta hull it's fairly low so you really yeah, most, want yeah. to be in a position where you don't get full damage uh, and you also want to repair early uh, the damage you get so you can yeah. use all your ancillary repair. That's something that I sometimes I, with the Tormi, especially if I'm brawling or fighting something that's trying to brawl me, I often, I often do rep a little bit late with the Tormi. Um, and there are, there's a couple of variations off of the standard fit that you can do. One of the things that I like to do is in my low slot here, I'll fit an overdrive injector instead of instead of our damage rig here. Uh, so if we take a look at our speedy fit here, um, there you can see we do have an overdrive injector here, which does bump our speed up quite significantly. Uh, let's take a look at hot AB. So you can see hot AB speed, we're doing uh, 1550 meters per second. Uh, then if we offline our OD here, you can see we're going down to 1380. So we're getting about, what, 160-ish extra uh, speed there, meters per second. So reasonable, reasonable little speed boost there, which does mean that we can now keep at range on some brawly things like uh, an Incursus, for example, um, or... Um, what other what other brawly things can we kind of stay away from? Obviously, like something like an Atron is probably going to well, catch us. Well, the, the Atron is one of the fastest frigates out there, so the, the Atron is going to catch you. The Atron has low tank, so against an Atron, what you want is be is have some clever piloting. Uh, you yeah, can, for example, starting... switch to Gleam, so you have better tracking. Uh, you can align out, so you just double click in space, you hit your AB, so you stretch the orbit of the Atron. Mm -hmm. That way you, you can have this these hits and you don't need a lot of hits. Like if you if you get just a couple good hits, you can uh, bleed through um, the repair of, of this low tank, but uh, high speed and high damage uh, frigates. But you can definitely, like with a Tormentor, it's a bit slow it's uh, decently agile so it gets his speed uh, quite fast and um, you can definitely pull range against something like a merlin for example even a dual and, web, well, a dual uh, web merlin you're not really going to but yeah no you're not going away from a dual web merlin <laughs> this is kind of a Depends depends on what's the tank of the dual web Merlin, but yeah. it's pretty much a hard hard counter there. Um, the thing with the Tormentor is usually you want really want to set up your engagement where you are 
15 kilometers from your opponent or 10 kilometers from your opponent and you want basically people to see that you have beams and burn at you so they they expect to out track you but while they are uh, burning at you uh, yeah. to get close you're very to get under your guns then, yep. that's yeah you're very dangerous that's where you rain dps so i think that's um that's why the Tormento is a good ship to start because you know what you have to do with it and so you can practice doing it you can also it's good for um, somebody that doesn't have a huge kill board or a lot of experience people will be willing to engage you so you can really fight on your terms uh, if you go inside a plex at zero you probably want to you to choose your engagement so you don't probably don't want to go into an atron at zero for example or a slasher that can have a newt and will just orbit you very very closely mm -hmm. and you cannot hit him and as you say if you can fit an overdrive you can fit all tech to mids that will give you a bit more flexibility so with uh, some some piloting you can compete with uh with brawlers with some uh, of the slower with that brawlers speed. yeah 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 basically yeah basically when you are when you are fighting something that's trying to brawl you even if it is something that's a little bit quicker um like the atron for example if you do start at a little bit of range and you immediately are burning hard away and you have your ab hot even though the atron can catch you a lot of the time he's going to die before he gets there because on the way in trying to come in on a tormentor uh, you're going to be eating a lot of damage uh, let's go and take a look now at our fit for alphas here uh, Mathia. so the alpha fit um, we're looking at we're looking at a dual web tormentor fit here so you can't actually hold your opponent with this fit that being said a lot of the time with a dual web tormentor particularly people aren't going to notice that you don't have a scram on them i mean a lot of pilots are going to notice but at the same time you'll be surprised how many people won't notice uh i can think of a number of times that i've died to dual web things even stuff that i kind of knew would probably be dual web like a comet or something and i just at that at that time i didn't notice it and uh you end up dying to to something that has no tackle um Mathia, is there anything you want to generally say about the alpha fit yeah, it's a bit of a cheesy fit, but uh, it works well, especially because people are not used to have the torment of being dual webbed. People are used to seeing in curses mm. or uh, comets, for example, or merlins being dual web, no scram. Uh, that way they can fit a lot of tank and a lot of damage. But Tormentor is pretty much the same way. It has a decent tank and decent damage. So you can totally do the, the same thing but uh, as a scram kiter. So you don't even have to be like at zero on the beacon, like would do a usual dual web blaster ship, but you can just stay at range and drain your DPS. Even for an alpha, the DPS is quite good. Yeah. It's one, 180, you can use a 3% implant to add a, a little bit more DPS. So you can definitely uh, kill people and uh, get them off guard uh, you can always when you the advantage of a dual web ship is also that you can disengage so if it doesn't work you so can if, for example yeah. a, com a comet comes into you and it rails you can disengage from it yeah yeah so it's a bit it's a, it's a nice way to practice without losing too much ships and it actually learns you um, range control range control that later when you are omega you can use uh, more advanced fits like the ones we've displayed uh, first and you can actually just compensate a bit with your piloting what you got before with the dual webs but yep. it's basically yep. the same thing yeah and so it's a it's a nice it's a nice start i feel even though it's a bit of a cheesy tactic <laughs> and of course you can like it's not an only an alpha fit so you can tech to uh yeah i've seen uh, i've seen you using... and the guns yeah yeah i've seen you using similar dual web fits in the past 
Yeah, I've used it with a lot of success. It can, it will definitely surprise stuff like blaster comets, uh, dual web hook builds, because now you track them if they are shield yeah. tanked. Yeah. Uh, you should EM and thermal. Yeah, you're shooting uh, so into the damage this, hole. Yeah. If you take to it, this is a scary feat that can kill um, navy frigates and other stuff. Yeah, and it is it is quite similar to the standard beam fit. Um, so it's quite similar to the Tech 2 fit. Uh, and yeah, pretty pretty decent tank and good DPS for an Alpha clone. Uh, my DPS is probably showing a little bit... Well, it's showing 180 here. That's cold. If we heat that, you can see it's getting 200. Yeah, if this was a Alpha heated, we're going to have about 180 DPS, which is still absolutely insane for an Alpha clone, especially projecting out to 8K and even even with an alpha clone fit you're still going to project to 8k with uh with imperial navy multi there um let's take a look now at our pulse fit uh so this is not something i don't think it's something i've even ever used before um not really a fan of the pulse lasers on a tormentor but this is something a little bit different that you can do with the tormi um so really the thing with this fit or the strength of this fit is that it has pretty insane tank um so actually i'm actually sitting in a mid-grade slave clone so it's showing a little bit extra tank than we would have here um but basically if we unload all of our uh armor reps here our uh ancillary armor rep charges we should have we should have about 11k ehp with this fit um which is pretty damn good obviously for a tech one frigate it's not quite it's not quite punisher level um but it's still a very good tank and we do have a web on this ship so a little bit better range control than you would have with with maybe a punisher or something um what are your what are your thoughts yeah, it's, on the... it's basically yeah it's basically a brick like the punisher but it doesn't have the um, downside of the Punisher, like the Punisher usually have has zero range control yeah. and has pretty bad projection, so people can scrum kite most most Punishers. Um, the Gatling pearls have very low uh, fitting requirements, but they still with with Scorch they will still do uh, about with this, that feat you will do about 100 uh, even 140 probably dps at the edge of scrum so the idea is just to be a, a brick and to grind down your opponent while he thinks that it's going to be it's going to be an easy match because he can fully control range on you because you're so slow because of the plate uh, and often people like will just underestimate your tank and underestimate their, uh, like overestimate their DPS. Mm. So often people will just attack you and fall apart uh, before they can break you completely because of cap or because of other things or just because uh, the damage you do is, is low but it applies very well, it applies everywhere and um, it's gonna grind down uh, a lot of tech one frigates just just because of the that that insane tank you have and the time you have to um, to use uh, all your ancillary charges and you can probably wrap a lot more with your wrapper yeah yeah without the, the paste in there yeah so basically basically it's a it's a bit of a tanky brick that at least can it can at least fight at scram kite range and at brawly range so you do have the option to switch to scorch there and still hit out to 8k uh so you can take on you can take on both scram kiters and uh and brawlers with this fit and basically with both of them you're just hoping that your tank lasts long enough uh for them to die <laughs> uh but so the exactly. last so the last fit that we are going to take a look at here is going to be uh, another alpha fit for using with a gang or a fleet. Um, so this one we're using 200 mil rolled tungsten carbide plates here. Um, so giving us a little bit more, a little bit more buffer because we are in a fleet and we don't really need the range control of the dual webs there. So we are using a uh, 
a enduring stasis webifier and a compact scram here um is there anything you want to say about the about the alpha gang fit mathea i think it's a bit of a flexible uh, all-round fit it it has uh, enough tank for a gang so it has a bit a bit of buffer it can use its ancillary but it's obviously it's mostly uh, a fit that is good in uh, swarms the idea is you have several webs on your target yeah and then you don't suffer from the range control problems yeah. you might have because you're so slow and then you just it it has nice dps because once again it's beams you can choose to be uh, either at scrum age or you can go further away you could actually use um, other crystals and even just decide to sit uh, outside of scrum range if uh, if that's uh, something you would like to do against your target so it's uh, quite flexible and it has some decent tank so this is this will always be useful in a gang for its value yep yep no, with the great thing about lasers is you can just switch out immediately to a bunch of different ammo so that you can project out to 30k and then you can also do really great damage up close as well. Yeah, exactly. Especially with uh, Tech 1 beams. Uh, Tech 1 beams are, are great because they don't rely that much, beams don't rely that much on the Tech 2 crystals because the Gleam doesn't do much more damage than multi frequency. Yeah, most of the time it has yeah, a bit, a bit multi better even. tracking, but it's not really relevant with beams that has a long range yep. platform. Yeah. So you can just use multi frequency most of the time. And you don't have an Aurora, but or the only benefit of Aurora is high DPS at long range. But you can uh, achieve decent DPS and have better tracking than Aurora with other crystals. So Tech One beams are definitely strong. They they are also very strong on the coercer on other Amar ships. So Amar Alphas can use them with great success. Mm. Much they are much better than pulses. Pulses rely a lot on uh, the scorch crystal. The scorch Otherwise, crystal, yeah. they are just blind. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty, uh, I think that's all the fits that we have here today. Mathia, is there any final words that you uh, that you want to, any final things you want to mention about the Tormentor? Yeah, I think uh, there is one thing to do with it, is just undock and go fight. <laughs> uh, I think yep. it's a great ship, it's a great start, so I just hope that uh, people will try it and have uh, as much fun with it as I had when I started. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Go ahead, grab a dual web Tommy. Go ahead and undock stuff, and uh, yeah, go and take fights. Go and take fights, and with the with the dual web Tommy, like like we were saying, you can have range control on things. So put both your webs on them and start running away. And basically, uh, if you're going to kill it, stay and kill it. If you're not, get the hell out of there. <laughs> uh, anyway, Mathia, thanks heaps for coming on and uh, talking Tommies with us. Thank you very much, Rico. No worries, no worries. Great to have you on, and thank you very much for watching. So from myself and Matthias Alenis, remember, as always, fly dangerous.